All right, good morning, Intro to Art. So um, you guys have probably put it together this far. I'm not here in class. We have a guest teacher, um, which isn't a big deal or anything because we're just going to continue along the lines of working along with the stencils that you guys were working on yesterday, um, the complex designs that I kind of walk you guys through the process of making. Um, yesterday, I gave you guys the task of creating a Danelian lowercase letter A, the number 8, and then something that a little bit more complex, the dollar symbol today. Or yesterday, I'm sorry. Today you guys are going to continue working with these designs, but um, working with them to actually prove that what you're doing is at working. Um, and keeping in mind the relationship between positive space and negative space. And understanding where the islands need to be so that pieces don't fall out of them. Um, I came around and got a chance to look at some of your guys' work and um, what was left over on the tables, that is. There were a number of pieces that as you guys were making the cuts along the insides of your black letters, you also were losing the inside negative space. So you didn't really get a letter. What you are getting was a letter's shape, but not necessarily a letter. The reason for that was simply that you were also forgetting that there needs to be this little gap in the design. Now, you, most people are starting to kind of get the hang of this and figure out where those the gaps are. The reason why I want to continue to work on the letter 8 or the number 8 and the dollar symbol here is to also understand where the, the, the islands need to be placed so that it actually looks like it should look. It looks like a number 8 or it looks like a dollar symbol. Now, I'm going to let you guys work on this for a little bit, um, but I want you guys to understand that towards the end of the hour, there needs to be something completed, all right? And the way that you guys are going to get credit for this is you guys will be taking photographs of this so that you can document your process or your procedure throughout the rest of the hour. First things first, I want you to continue to work on the number eight if you haven't done so, and I want you to complete the dollar symbol, all right? Many of you guys will make some mistakes here. And actually, I'm expecting some mistakes to be made. But regardless, I want you to take a photograph of what you guys end up stenciling. Um, a photograph is pretty simple. All you would need to have is a scrap sheet of paper, and you can use markers or colored pencils to prove that the stencil actually works. So here's the letter A that I was doing. The O, half of the number 8 right here for one of my classes. All I'm looking for is a photograph that your stencils actually work out the way they need to be. Now, many of you guys will use the entire hour to do this, and there's no problem with that. But for the, some of you guys that actually get completed with this a little bit sooner, what I'd like you to do is grab an extra index card. I've got them up here on the paper cutter right next to the X-Acto knives. And I'd like you to create a stencil based off of your name. Um, now, obviously, everybody's name has different letters, different amount of letters, so you might run out of space. What I, you might have to do is maybe shorten your name a little bit, but regardless, when you guys cut out the stencils, those of you that are done with these stencils right here, I want you to also make sure that the stencil works. So if you are shading in with pencil, excuse me, or a marker, um, when you pull the stencil off, you can actually read your name, and it doesn't look like a random shape has been drawn through. Now I've already started to go in here and make some cuts. For example, I started to make the cut for the number eight, but if you look right here, I do have a little break or an island that will attach. So when you guys do this, I'll probably hang this up on the board so that you guys can see. This whole thing, these little inside white circles aren't necessarily going to fall out because they're still attached right down, oh, there we go, right down there, if you guys can see that. This part needs to be remain touching the white, the negative space around here, or else when you cut the whole thing out, it's not going to give you a number eight or a dollar sign. It's actually going to give you a really random shape that kind of looks like a number eight or kind of looks like a dollar symbol. Now, the reason why I settled on a dollar symbol here is because technically you've already done this with your last stencil, right? The S. Um, I just use this to kind of practice to make sure it worked. So really all you need to do is go back to your letter S that we first made in yesterday's class and imagine what it would look like to run just a set of vertical lines right through here. How would the vertical line attach? Maybe not so much on the top and the bottom, but in this middle portion so that you still had the curve over here and the curve over here. 
I apologize if this is backwards for you guys. I don't know. I'm, we're looking at it on my video, and I'm, I'm noticing that it's a little backwards. Wh whatever. Um, the design still is going to run up and down the middle. I drew a kind of an example of this, so I hope this is running the right way. But as you can see, the black letter S is very simple to cut out, but this gap right here between the vertical line is something that you guys need to be aware of. So whether you're using two vertical lines or one vertical line, whatever it is, you need to make sure that somewhere along the lines you have, and I'll try to draw this in here, you have a gap. Now this marker doesn't work. You have a gap that allows the negative space of the stencil to actually connect. So give you guys a little demonstration here. You can watch this and rewind it, but you'll notice here I've drawn some lines where I know if I cut this out and I stop the cut right at that black line and stop the cut at that black line, I realize that this area in here will still be connected. Now, hopefully you guys don't rush through this and hopefully you guys use the class time to, to work yourself through the problems because when I return tomorrow, um, you guys will be working on a three color stencil. Um, it'll be a design that you guys are probably really familiar with but instead of just using one color here, you guys will actually be using three colors, which means you guys will need to be making a few different cuts and a few different stencils so that this actually comes out looking the way it needs to look, uh, which is really the main key here. So work throughout the hour on this. Make sure you return the X-Acto knives back to the holders. There should be five X-Acto knives in each cup. And make sure you're documenting the work that you have um, because you probably may misplace this or lose this or it might get cut up. Um, just in the in the sense of working throughout the hour. So make sure you're documenting by taking photos and you have my email address on the board that you can send your photos to. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, knock on wood, um, so that we can go over this process. But again, I hope you guys use class time as best as possible so that you guys will know what you're working with or what you're working towards when I return. Good luck and I'll see you when I return.